welcome back to another episode of the Illustrated Angle. Um, so I'm going to talk about something quite specific today, um, and it's something not many people would have done. It's very new to the UK. Um, it's quite popular on, on sort of continental Europe, uh, Italy especially, uh, Holland, all those sort of areas. It's very popular, very popular in Japan and it is sort of slowly making its way over here. So I wanted to start a conversation about it and have a little chat before it gets, uh, before it blows up and becomes huge and I sort of missed the boat. And I'm rambling. What I'm talking about is trout area fishing. So for those of you who haven't heard of it, don't know what it is, trout area fishing is fishing for stocked rainbow trout using very light lures. Now, those lures could be small soft plastic lures or silicon lures. They could be uh, spoons, they could be hard baits, i.e. sort of small jerk baits, rip baits, uh, cranks, that sort of thing. Um, and what sets it aside from most other tr trout fishing, honestly, especially sort of competition style, is it's all catch and release. So the only sort of competition is releasing the fish in as good a condition as possible. So what you essentially do, rather than sort of a crew, a weight or a bag, it's all done on numbers of fish uh, landed, hooked and landed. Now by landed, generally that means just getting the fish in the net and securing it as, so it's been landed. The fish in trout area fishing doesn't ever leave the water. So as people know, trout are quite susceptible to dying. One of the main things that is taking them out of the water, onto a bank, onto a boat, etc, etc. When you do that, you drastically reduce the chance of that trout returning and surviving. So, in trout area fishing, all the hooks are barbless. They're all single hooks, no trebles allowed. Um, there's different competitions have slightly different rules, but generally it's all within a certain size of hook, so they have to be within a certain size limit. Um, they don't allow spinners for the most part. It's spoons, it's uh, soft plastics, usually fished on like a, a very, very light, barbless jig head, uh, usually sub one gram. The, the landing nets are very specific. They're not like your traditional sort of mesh there, silicon or uh, like a latex uh, net, a netting. It's not like a, a material that's sort of meshed. It, it's like it's larger rings. It's very soft. It's a lot kinder to the fish and the, the, the sort of protective slime on the fish that keeps it from getting infections and, and that sort of thing. So essentially what they do, it, it, it's, it's quite an alien uh, concept to those who don't do it or don't know anything about it. You have these small stocked lakes or ponds. They cram as many people on there as they possibly can. And for most people, they look at it and go, that's a crazy amount of people. And it is a lot. Um, and essentially you're given a peg, you fish very close to the anglers either side of you, you haven't got a lot of water to fish in, you're fishing directly out from in front of you, and what you're trying to do is catch as many fish from that peg, that one you're standing, within a time period. And that time period changes every competition, everyone has their own uh, setup and rules. I think generally, and I could be wrong, it's sort of like 30 to 45 minutes, something along those lines, it can change. And then at the end of that, the, the organizers of the competition will make some sort of signal and you will then move down pegs. So you will move down a, a set number of pegs, be it one, be it three, be it five, whatever it is, and you move round the lake or pond. And by the end of the session, the whole competition, uh, you would have fished your way around the, the lake. And the reason for that is that there can be no one sitting on the hot peg. You know, everyone's had a chance to sort of work their way around the water and cover each individual water. Obviously, by the end of it, it starts getting harder because a lot of the fish have got caught and there's not as many fish willing to be to be caught on a lure as there was at the beginning of the competition. So it is still favourable to draw a good peg from the start. Now, the thing is, with these lakes and ponds, they're usually very uniform, not a lot of... Um, uh, structure or features is very uniform, very flat. 
and that is to try and keep it as even and as fair as possible so there isn't really a hot peg obviously fish just naturally tend to group up in one area more than the other so that's the only the only thing that could affect who could be better than others is where the fish might be and also the skill of the skill of the angler is obviously the most important thing so the reason i'm talking about this is it's a very new thing to the uk we seem to be stuck in this fly only mindset which is, has been the you know, part of UK fishing for such a long time and I do sort of agree with it on um, natural waters with natural wild stocks of, of brown trout and things like that uh, but for these stocked ponds which these fish are being introduced artificially why are we snobby about it these fish have just been put there to be caught generally to be killed why do we care how people are catching them especially nowadays when you talk lure fishing, you're not talking about super heavy rods that makes it unsporting, um, you know, could, you know and, and just rip these fish out by the lips. Modern lure fishing is very light, and actually I'd say more there's more finesse involved with um, some of the very light lure fishing for trout than there is most fly fishing for trout. And working at a trout vet reservoir, a venue where people can fish lures and also fish fly, I would 100% say the guys who are good at the lure fishing side of it are more switched on to modern methods of fish care, more switched on to light, um, finesse fishing for these fish, it's not so brutal. Some of the guys that are fishing the fly have obviously been doing it for years and years and years, as we all know, <coughs> we all get stuck in our ways. So they're still doing it how they was however many years ago, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Um, which isn't wrong, that's how they want to fish, that's fine. But the reality of it is it's not, it's not moving on with the times and, and uh, taking on new information and evolving. <coughs> Controversially, maybe, I think that lure fishing for trout is the only way you're going to save some of these venues. Hanningfield is a prime example of that. If Hanningfield hadn't have been opened as an any method fishery when it was, there would be no fishing on Hanningfield now. now or no trout fishing at least. It might be left to run as a natural course fishing venue, uh, like the likes of Ardley have, etc., etc., which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but for those who like fishing for trout, there wouldn't be a trout venue now at Hanningfield if it wasn't for it going any method. The reality of it is fly fishing is decreasing in popularity. Now, that is a controversial thing, and I'm sure it's quite triggering to those who really, really enjoy their fly fishing. And I'm just being honest and realistic. I'm not judging, I'm not saying it should or it shouldn't. I'm just saying the real facts, fly fishing is a dropping away. There's not many youngsters getting into fly fishing. Now, here's my thoughts behind why. Most, not most, that's, that's an exaggeration. There are some fly anglers who are what I would call gatekeepers. They don't like people encroaching on their fishing on, or their venue or their way of catching fish if they've stumbled across something good which is fully within their rights but what that does it makes it quite quite uninviting for new people to get into it it makes it quite intimidating it makes it a bit of a closed book it makes them not want to be involved with it because they don't see any sort of camaraderie any sort of uh, uh, community or anything fly anglers are very 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 as a general rule closed off they don't want like talking people it's very secretive now when there was lots of fly anglers that was how it had to be because you had to protect your fishing nowadays there isn't many fly anglers and that is sort of working against it and i've seen it happen many many times i've seen fly anglers who are quite judgy uh don't get me wrong i've seen others that aren't but i'm just i'm just giving an opinion of why i think fly fishing might be dying off uh, especially for trout you see, there's, there's, this, there's a, a viewpoint from some of these fly anglers that they are here and everything else is here or lower, depending on how you fish for trout. Now, I don't really understand it. Like I said, these rainbows that most of the people are fishing for, they're stocked fish. They're purely bred for the purpose of being caught. They're not tricky to catch. Uh, they're not these fish that we should be put on a pedestal. They're actually invasive species um, that certain venues had the license to stock i just don't get it now i'm talking from my own personal point of view i'm a very inclusive person i don't like to judge how people fish 
how they want to catch fish as long as they're enjoying what they're doing and out fishing i think that's the most important thing i know that that's not the popular opinion i know there's a lot of people that would say there are methods of fishing be it fly fishing be it lure fishing be it uh, different different methods whatever that are on a higher level than other forms of angling or other forms or other methods of catching fish shall we say so it is what it is my point is these these, so these trout some of these especially smaller still water trout venues i do feel like they're going to have to start adapting and introducing some way lure fishing as a secondary means of drawing clientele in this brings me on to something that's <coughs> excuse me that's quite relevant maybe by the time of this video it might have happened i might get it out before that so there's some, a lot of guys that i that see come through the doors of Hanningfield, some very 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 competent trout lure anglers some of, in fact some of the best in the country and even some of the best in europe who have, have gone on to compete in europe and do very very well so a lot of these guys sort of all obviously know each other they've pulled together they've pulled their ideas their knowledge their funding all these sort of things and they've managed to gain access to a couple of small still waters in lincolnshire now these small still, still waters are being stocked and run purely as area trout venues so they would be used as competition venues fishing for trout on light lures now these are as far as i know the first place in the uk that are being utilized purely for this purpose they are being uh looked after and created purely for these reasons there's been one-off competitions that i've actually i've run some myself on fly trout at, uh, venues but never anything solely made for this so it's quite a big deal and i feel like it's something that we should shout about lure fishing is is it's it's a lot more accessible especially for youngsters right so casting a fly is quite difficult there's an element of skill to it it takes practice it takes patience which is good it's good for you to test yourself to push yourself and to do these things that expand your knowledge um, and your skill set it's great for kids and for youngsters it's quite hard to engage them for long enough for them to get a result now by get a result i mean catch a fish <coughs> so if we can introduce these children to fishing for trout at a young age using lures i absolutely guarantee you over their period of their angling life they will encounter people fishing for trout on flies and there will be times where a fly angler will outfish a lure angler because that's the way the trout want it on that day so with a fly obviously you can present a very very small bait imitating very very small insects a lot better than someone fishing on a spinning rod can there's no getting away from that that is just the way it is so these youngsters who have got into trout fishing at a younger age, fishing with spoons and soft plastics and things like that, uh, will see this and think, do you know what? I fancy giving that fly fishing go. I should add that to my armory so when the days come that my lure fishing isn't that effective, I can then cast a fly and still catch fish. So in my mind, however we get fit kids fishing, we should get them fishing. And if we want to save these trout venues around the UK, we need to give we need to give people a reason to be there and by that we can introduce these kids at a younger age not waiting for them to get to a, a bit older so they can cast a fly and hold the patience for a bit longer get them interested in trout at a young age doesn't matter how they catch them get them interested with the fish itself then they will graduate they will go through stages they will get to the point where their interest is peaked by fly fishing they will get there naturally i see it on a daily basis we see a lot of the guys who have come to Hanningfield be it fishing on bait with the power bait and worm or with the lures will be there they'll have a really tough day can't really catch fish but they'll see a guy 20 yards away fishing on the fly absolutely slaughtering them and they will go i want to be doing that as well and that's where that switch comes and they want to add that to the armory and i see it happening on a daily basis there's a lot of guys now who are adding each skill to their armory and it's a good thing so I think it's something we should talk about. There should be more venues offering this in the UK, if you ask my opinion. Even if some of these um, fly-only trout venues were offering 
lure weekends. We have one weekend a month where we allow lure fishing. For them, I don't really see what they stand to lose. The fish are being removed anyway, right? So whatever pre-misconceptions they have on lure fishing and how it might affect the fish and things like that, why does it matter when the fish are being removed? There's not that many catch and release trout pools, especially um, you know this time of year when the, the water temperature's up and things like that. The trout don't release very well anyway. So why do they have this pre-misconception that, that lure fishing is bad? I get there will be a kickback. There will be a kickback from fly anglers. I understand that. Hanningfield witnessed that firsthand when it went any method. A lot of the guys who were staunch fly only swore off the place and they said they would never come back. And I have to admit, most of them have over the years. They swore off at first and, event and over time they creep back, they creep back, they creep back. Even if it's only occasion, they still dip their toe in. So I'm not that, I, I wouldn't, as a, as a venue owner, I'd be more worried about me keeping my venue open than I would be with offending guys who are perhaps stuck in their ways. Because here's the reality of it, and it's quite a morbid uh, thing to say, those guys do not live forever. There isn't youngsters replacing them. So when they, and, and inevitably, when they go, when they leave this mortal plane, who will be paying my bills? Because they won't be. My venue will still need to have its bills paid. I will still need to pay to stock fish. There'll be no one there to, there to pay me to fish because they'll all be gone. So I do feel like this, some of these venues need to have a little bit of foresight, just look to the future and have a look at the real longevity of their fishery and see how it goes and where it goes. I'm rambling a bit, but I feel like it's, uh, I'm trying to sort of like dump a lot of info from my mind into this just to open a discussion and have other people give their opinion on what they think. I'd, I'd be really interested to hear because I know what I think and I'm not sure if anyone agrees with me. But I might be the only person with my opinion. What do you think? Is anyone who is interested in the trout area thing, do they know anything about it? Is this the first time you've ever heard anything about it? Uh, I'd be interested to hear what, you, what you've got to think, what you've got to say about it, you know, uh, what encounters you've had, where you think trout fishing in the UK is going, any predictions, anything's right, anything you think is wrong, see, just see what others think. Um, like I said, I am rambling a little bit. So, there is that, that it'll be August, Sunday, the August, Sunday, August the 14th will be the first time that this new venue will be open. It's in Lincolnshire. I, I can't remember off the top of my head the exact area. What I'll do is I'll put a link in, in the description to this video to their Facebook group uh, where you can join and the guys there are really helpful. If you've never done trout area fishing before, they will sort of run you through the do's and don'ts, the rules, the equipment you have to have to sort of be compliant with those rules. Um, yeah, the reality of it is, these guys want everyone involved. So if you're new to it, please don't be put off by the fact it's a competition. This, these initial uh, events are more to try and introduce as many people as possible to this style of fishing and to make it more popular. Really open the UK up to this area of trout fishing. Um, so I will drop a link to that in the in the description. But oh, really, my main point is I want to open this conversation channel. And I hear, it's, I, no, maybe I've missed it. Maybe there are venues in the UK that are doing this already. I don't think there is. I think there's some way you can lure fish sometimes, or you, you're not really what you would call specifically made for it. Anyway, I've rambled on a bit. Um, I've done sort of 18 minutes already, which actually is, is quite a long a long chat for me. Let me know in the comments what you want to talk about next, any sort of particular topics, anything that's uh, relevant or will be relevant within the world of fishing. Um, I'm trying to do this quite regularly because at the moment I'm struggling to get out and film any proper videos because I'm just so busy at work. Uh, as the, the, the summer sort of comes to an end, I'll be a little bit less busy at work and I have time to go out fishing and do some filming. Uh, so again, if anyone's got any ideas for any sort of actual filming or they want, they want anything, uh, they, they don't want to see me doing anything or fishing for anything, please let me know. Um, I, as any, all of you will probably know, I'm very much um, an all-rounder, a you know, multi-species, multi-discipline, uh, multi-venue, whether you, you know, fresh water, salt water, bank, boat, beach, whatever it is, I do it all. Uh, so if you've got any suggestions, anything you'd like to see in particular, or even if you would like to see some more sort of tips, and sort of method videos explaining um, 
how I fish for certain species, going into a bit more detail, showing rigs, showing how I uh, use different baits or lures or whatever. Anyway, let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.